Hey everyone, what's up? Mirai here, and welcome to another Eisboxer video. In this one, I am going to be giving an in-depth visual example of how action target groups can potentially work. Now I say potentially because there's just, there's just so many ways to set things up in Iceboxer that there's no possible way that I could show all of the outcomes or, or examples that there are. So just gonna cover a few, uh, four examples to be exact. So nothing too crazy, nothing too wild. Gonna try to keep this one short. Gonna try to uh, move through it quickly. This is not a beginner video. This is not, uh, I'm not going to be showing how to set anything up in this video at all. Um, if you're looking for the basic beginner action target group video, there will be a link in the description for that. So check that out if you're looking for it. Um, of course, I will say that I built something kind of fancy for this video to show these examples. Uh, it is fairly interesting. It took me, I don't know, two days to do it. Not like 48 hours straight, but you know, over the course of two days, I put it together, set it up and thought, well, this is kind of cool. Now, um, if you think it's cool and you want to see how it works, by all means, check out the profile in the description as well. So uh, I will be sharing that in case you find any of this crazy and interesting. Maybe you can, um, you know, integrate it into your own setup. So. What do we have here? What do we have? So if you watch the basic uh, action target group video, you'll know what this white border is. The white border follows the active game client or active character around. Uh, the reason I do that is because action target groups can act a little bit differently depending on which game client or which character has focus and which are un uh, out of focus. So there's that. Um, so there's no mistake as to which game client I'm activating or executing uh, mapped keys from. Uh, other than that, I do have the slot ID number identifiers again. So slot one, two, three, and four. Character one, two, three, and four, they line up nice and neat. Um, so there's no confusion with that. And the colored rectangles, those are to indicate which character or which slot is in a particular action target group. Now my action target groups are labeled colors. They are green, blue, yellow, and red. Very easy to follow along with colors. Um, I will be sequencing through a, a set of numbers with click bars that are gonna look something like this. So green, blue, yellow, and red. There is no gray action target group, but the gray number to the left of the yellow works with it, and the gray number to the right of the red works with it, and we'll talk about those when we're there. So I think that's it for this system at the moment, and let's uh, jump over here and see what we've got set up. So, oh yeah, I was kind of in the right spot. So just to show that, um, Characters are right. Here's all four characters. They all have a green dot. We look at blue real fast. We see two and four, two and four right there. Yellow's got one and three, one and three, and then red is one, two, and four. Just so we're clear, you don't think I'm some big fat liar over here. <laughs> anyway, over in non-combat, I've got um, four rotations bound to one, two, three, and four. Real easy, colored rotations that are gonna coincide with the color of the action target group. So there's no mistaking, again, colors are very easy to follow along with visually. So that's why I chose colors. Um, so for the first example, the first two examples actually, we're just gonna be using something basic. Um, we're gonna be, like I said, sequencing through click bars. And what I'm doing is I'm just turning on a click bar, I'm turning off the rest. Now, it's just the way I do it. It's just the way that I'm uh, tackling this to show numbers in a sequence. Um, there's no, there's no, why did you do it this way, Mariah? There's no real reason. It's just how I set it up. You probably could set it up a little bit different with some do map key actions, but it's for example purposes, for the purpose of examples, um, it's easier just to see all the actions rather than have to trace things back through do map key actions. Anyway, we are using all of green and the same thing for blue. We are using all of blue. Now, um, every single step, as you can see, so, I mean, there's five, just real fast, there, there's five click bars. Uh, we're turning one on in step one, we're turning the rest off. In step two, we're turning two on. In step three, we're turning three on. So on and so forth, we're turning the rest off just so that there's no additional click bars that are left behind accidentally. So, and we are pushing through every step. We are enforcing that every step moves forward using a, where is it, mapped key step action. I recently did a video on this action, so if you want to know more about it, check out that video. Guess where it's going to be? In the video description or somewhere on my channel. <laughs> One or the other. So there's that. But um, these two rotations are pretty identical. So anyway, when I press 1, all the characters in the action target group are going to sequence through those numbers, right? Now, these don't have to be click bars, of course. They can be anything. They could be fireball. They could be, you know, uh, 
a dot spell, or something. You can, they, they could be an ability in game. They don't have to even be an ability in game. Of course, Ice Boxer has so many like management things to it. As you can see right here, I'm just sequencing click bars. Maybe you want to create some sort of menu toggle or something that goes through, you know, a, a, a sequence of something. I don't know. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, options to choose. But anyway, just to show that these continue to sequence through, no matter which window I'm playing from. So this is your basic basic all of action target group. Now, not to confuse anyone, normally, normally, if you like want all of the windows, you should be using all with current, of course. But for this example, let's use mages as the example again. Let's say I've got four mages, but they're all on different accounts, and I don't normally log them in all at the same time. But they're all in the mage action target group. Now, today, I decided to log all of my mages in at the same time, so therefore, I would get a result like this if I was trying to execute... Uh, a mapped key that was being sent to the mage action target group, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to confuse anyone and say, um, you know, throw all of your characters in an action target group versus all with current. It's, I'm confusing you already, so let's just move on. Anyway, this is all of when everybody's in there. As for the blue, we're only going to get two and four. Two and four are the only two that are going to sequence through these numbers. And again, it doesn't matter which character is actively focused on at the moment. So that's pretty, that's pretty basic. And um, here's something cool with the system I designed. We can see that uh, three is not in the blue action target group. So let's put three in the blue action target group. We'll let it reset. We'll let it recycle. And then all of a sudden, blue is appearing next to three. So the question is, here's green. And then the question is, is blue now going to work with three? And of course it will. But it's very cool that this updates. I really like this. I, I built that in. I'm, pr I'm very proud of this system, by the way. I'm, I'm smiling the entire time because I'm very proud of the system. So anyway, this is how um, you know action target groups work when you use all of a certain selective target. Now, now it gets a little bit more advanced and crazy when we move over to the yellow and red examples. So there are a lot of actions in here. And like I said, I probably wouldn't approach it this way if I was doing this like for real, for real. But for the sake of example, just so nothing gets lost in a doom after key action, everyone can see all of the actions that are happening here. Uh, so what's happening is I'm turning on, again, when we're sequencing through numbers, so step one wants to turn on the yellow click bar. But we're using others in for this particular example. So we're using others in, and we're turning it off in all of the other uh, yellow group as well. But in, but in addition to that, we're also turning on a gray action target group so that we can track the internal state of this step. <laughs> right? Check this out. Check this out. So for yellow, we press three. Now, I guess, I guess real fast, maybe others in is a little confusing to people and just seeing it here might still be a little confusing. Here's something that I kind of came up with. Two questions you ask yourself as for, for others in. In addition to the client that is focused and active, are you running any other characters from your character set at that time? My answer is yes. I'm running two, three, and four. Out of two, three, and four, for me, are any of those in the yellow action target group? Yes, three is in the action is in the yellow action target group. So when playing from this particular window, and I press three, three is going to get the is going to execute the actions of that step. Now you'll see that this gray one popped up. It says yellow internal. What this means is that this character is also in the yellow action target group. So internally, they are in sync with this other character, even though they did not execute any actions with this guy. I'm hoping this is making sense. Let me move to a non-yellow character. So again, we'll ask ourselves those same two questions. You know, in addition to the active, in addition to slot two, are any other slots active in my character set? Are, are any other slots loaded in my character set? The answer is yes. One, three, and four are also loaded. So, out of one, three, and four, who are in? You know, are any of those in the yellow action target group? Yes, one and three are. So, when activating it from here, they're both going to move through the sequence together. And you can see that it jumped off of one, one the gray went away, and it went to a, a yellow two just to show that they're still in sync. So they'll stay in sync here. And I come over here and I press the key. And this three is going to go away and a four, a gray four is going to pop up to show that they are internally on step four 
to stay in sync with this window, right? Is everybody following along? It's a very cool system. I hope that this is not too confusing. And if it is, um, really, like I said, download this and just play with it. Um, now, as for this, I mean, for, so as for red, maybe I should, well, I guess I'll show red real fast. We're using an advanced target for red. So we're checking to see if the current window that we're activating it from is also in red. If the answer is yes, then we turn on that number of the click bar for the step that we're on. And uh, we just, the same thing, we have the gray click bars. So that's what we have all these additional actions down here for. So we can hide and show gray click bars uh, at will as we need them. So with that said, oh good, we have more friends. There's always people. Everybody always finds me. I try to find the most remote locations. This is not a live stream. These people are not like live, they're stream sniping me or anything like that. They're just coming to hang out. They're just flying over my remote hidden locations and they find me. They just want to hang out. I'm in the middle of nowhere in, in uh, Duskwood under trees. Well, maybe there's an open sky. Oh, there's a little bit of an open sky. So anyway, as for the, um, actually, let me sync these guys back up so we all have yellow. Okay. So as for the red action target group, if I execute it in a red window, it's going to go off. But the other two red characters are going to go to their gray state. Let me turn this down, which is fine, right? So I continue to cycle through, and they continue to stay in sync with me. Great. Now I move over to another window, and they'll pick up from four just like they should, and everyone else stays in sync just as they should. Now. I'll move over to this window and we'll pick up, they'll move to five. <laughs> we have even more people coming to this no, no man's location. Now, that's fine and dandy. That's very similar to what we just showed with the yellow. However, what happens when we execute this from a non red window? Let's find out. Let's find out. Nothing. Nothing happens. I assure you I'm pressing four. Nothing is happening. However, by pressing four in a non-red window, does that mess up the sync for the other windows? Let me move over here. Nope. Moved right to two like they should. Move to three and move to four. Very fancy. Very fancy. So um, I don't have a real name for this fourth example. It's just something I kind of whipped up. It's not an others in, it's not an all of, it's a custom advanced target paired up with an action target group to get the result that I want. So if you're interested in this, again, check out the profile, please check out the profile. And of course it doesn't have to be click bars. It can be actual um, abilities, in-game abilities and whatnot. But I have a lot of stuff myself that I build around action target groups and advanced targets and whatnot for my certain toggle menus and whatnot. So you can get really intricate. You can get really, really uh, advanced with some of this stuff. So that's it. I think that's it. Wait, did I show this? Yeah, I did show it. I did show the uh, live update for the uh, action target groups. Anyway, thank you for watching. It's been a long video. Mirai out.